Hello, my name is Fiona, and I am a certified teacher and a Praxis coach with Study.com. Are you planning to take the Elementary Education Science Test? This is Praxis Test number 5005. This problem set covers the entire Praxis 5005 Elementary Education Science exam. Let's review the types of questions you can expect to encounter on the exam. Let's get started. Which of the following represents the layer of Earth shown in orange in this image? So this layer here. Earth's crust, Earth's mantle, Earth's inner core, or Earth's outer core? So let's start with the white is the inner core. The red is the outer core. The Earth's crust is the blue. And this layer here is the mantle. So the correct answer is the mantle. Which of the following is the definition for the phase of the moon pictured? The correct answer is the first lunar phase of the moon. The image shows a crescent moon. So we've got that here, the crescent moon which is the phase that comes right after the new moon. In this phase, only a small portion of the moon is illuminated and it appears as a crescent shape. So the correct answer is that. Why are the others incorrect? From the top, the completely illuminated side of the moon is in full view. This would describe the full moon, which is not the phase shown in our image. So we can cross that out. The phase where the moon appears less than full, but more than half lit. This describes the gibbous phase, which is not shown here as the moon in our image is less than half lit. And lastly, we have the moon's phase when its dark side is towards the earth. This describes the new moon, where the moon is not visible from Earth, which is not the case in this image. So we can cross that out as well. Thus, the moon pictured in this image is the first lunar phase after the new moon. Sedimentary rocks form in layers as sediment is deposited, is then buried and compressed, and eventually becomes rock. Bones and other organic materials can become trapped in the layers and are fossilized. Which of the following correctly explains the fossilization process? Organic material is deposited and covered by sediment where pressure over time creates the fossil. Organic material is pressed into the sediment, is changed into inorganic material, and creates the fossil. Organic material is dissolved, leaving a mold behind, which is filled with minerals and creates the fossil. Or, organic material is broken apart and reforms over time, which creates the fossil. The correct answer is, organic material is dissolved, leaving a mold behind, which is filled with minerals and creates the fossil. This process known as petrification, occurs when the organic material decomposes after being buried under layers of sediment, leaving a cavity or mold. This mold is then filled with minerals from groundwater, which crystallize and form a fossil. Why are the other answers incorrect? Starting below here, this is incorrect because the organic material does not typically reform into a fossil, Rather, it is replaced by minerals. Then at the top, this description is too simplistic and doesn't explain the mineralization process. So we can cross that out as well. Next, this lacks detail about the dissolution and mineral replacement process, which is crucial for fossilization. So that is incorrect as well. Thus, the correct process involves the dissolution of organic material, leaving a mold that is filled with minerals to create the fossil. Which of the following is the cause of the season shown? Earth relies more on heat from the moon and stars. 
Earth's gravitational pull causes temperatures to drop. The sun gets cooler as the Earth rotates around it. Or Earth's axis is pointed away from the sun. We can see the image clearly shows winter. And the correct answer here is Earth's axis is pointed away from the sun. During the winter in either hemisphere, that part of the Earth is tilted away from the sun, leading to shorter days, lower angles of sunlight, and colder temperatures. Why are the other answers incorrect? From the top. The moon and the stars do not significantly contribute to the Earth's heat. So that is not correct. Earth's gravitational pull does not affect seasonal temperature change. So that can be crossed out. And the sun's temperature remains relatively constant. Seasonal changes are due to the tilt of the Earth's axis, not the sun's temperature. Therefore, the correct cause of the season shown in the image is that the Earth's axis is pointed away from the sun. Which of the following answer choices names the process of when cells multiply and duplicate? Metastasize, reproduce, mitosis, or nuclei? Let's look at nuclei first. Nuclei are the central structures within cells that contain genetic material and not a term to describe the process of cell division. So we can eliminate that right away. Now, the correct answer is mitosis. This is the process by which a single cell divides to produce two identical daughter cells, each containing the same number of chromosomes as the original cell. Metastasize refers to the spread of cancer cells from the original site to other parts of the body, and that's why that's not correct. And while reproduce can refer to the creation of new cells, it is a general term and not specific to the process of cell division. So the correct answer is definitely mitosis here. According to the classification of primates in the cladogram, which of the following answer choices is an example of an animal that shares common characteristics with a loris? Gorilla, lemur, alligator, or frog? Let's look at the cladogram and we see these various branches and off of the very same branch is lemurs as well as lorises. So the correct answer is lemur. According to the cladogram, lemurs and lorises share a closer common ancestor than the other listed animals. Simple as. Why are the others not correct? Gorillas are apes, so it's a more distantly related branch. Alligators are reptiles, not primates and frogs are amphibians and even more distantly related. So those are all wrong. Thus the lemur shares common characteristics with the loris according to the classification shown in the cladogram. Which of the following answer choices best describes what tissues are? Tissues are made up of veins and arteries. Tissues genetically form around the heart. Tissues protect the body from inflammation, or tissues are groups of cells that work together. The correct answer here is tissues are groups of cells that work together. Tissues are collections of similar cells that perform a specific function within an organism, such as muscle tissue, nerve tissue, connective tissue. Why are the other answers not correct? From the top, because veins and arteries are specific structures within the circulatory system and not general groups of cells forming tissues, so that's not correct. Next, it's because tissues can form in any part of the body, not just around the heart. And last, because while some tissues, like immune tissues, can be involved in the response to inflammation, 
not all tissues serve this function. So tissues are groups of cells that work together is indeed the correct answer here. Which of the following answer choices best describes Newton's third law of motion? What is Newton's third law of motion? For every action, there is a reaction of equal force. So let's go through each of these. For every force, the reaction is inconsistent. This, of course, is not correct because the law states that reactions are consistent, equal, and opposite. Next, for every reaction, there is a consequence. This does not accurately describe the equal and opposite nature of forces described by the third law, so we can eliminate that. I'm going to the bottom. For every pull of gravity, there is less reaction, and that is incorrect because it describes the relationship between forces incorrectly. Newton's third law specifies that forces are equal and opposite, not lesser. So the correct answer is, for every action, there is a reaction of equal force. And this is the exact state statement of Newton's third law of motion. It means that for every force exerted on an object, there is an equal and opposite force exerted by that object. Which of the following answer choices best describes how a pulley transfers the energy to the rope? The tightness of the pulley eases the tension that creates a transfer of force. The rope is pulled and the tension transfers to the rope, creating more energy and strength. The bucket is heavy and the weight in it makes the rope sag and pull on it evenly, or the roping is attached to a bucket that holds weight and the weight is transferred. The correct answer is the rope is pulled and the tension transfers to the rope, creating more energy and strength. When you pull the rope on a pulley, the tension in the rope changes direction and helps lift a load by transferring the applied force through the rope. Why are the others incorrect? From the top. This is incorrect because the pulley itself doesn't ease tension. This one here, the bucket is heavy and the weight in it makes the rope sag. This is incorrect because it does not describe the function of the pulley in transferring energy or force. And the last one is incorrect because it does not explain how the energy or force is transferred through the pulley system. Select all the characteristics of neutrons. Select one or more. When we see this, this is an indication that there is probably more than one correct answers amongst the options we're given. So before we get into the options, let's look at the characteristics of neutrons. They are neutral particles. They don't carry charge. Their mass is approximately equal to that of a proton, which is around one atomic mass unit. And like protons, they reside in the nucleus of an atom. So let's look at the answers now. Has a negative charge, has no charge, has a mass of one atomic mass unit, and or found in the nucleus. So let's read our question again, select all the characteristics of neutrons. So we can eliminate has a negative charge as we know it's a neutral particle. The correct answers are has no charge, has a mass of one atomic mass unit, and is found in the nucleus. Before beginning this question, I just wanted to point out that there are questions about the unifying processes of science across all categories, this being one of them. Which of the following unifying processes of science can be used to document changes and consistency over time? Systems, constancy, data, or measurements? The correct answer is measurements. 
This is correct because measurements allow scientists to quantify observations and document changes or consistency over time. By taking precise measurements at different points in time, scientists can track and analyze trends, patterns, and variations. Why are the other answers not correct? Systems refer to interconnected components, but don't specifically document changes over time. Constancy identifies elements that remain the same, not changes over time. Data is collected information, but measurements give it meaning for tracking changes and consistency. So that's not correct. Therefore, measurements are the unifying process of science that can be used to document changes and consistency over time. A person wanting to pursue a career in an environmental branch of science is most likely to earn a degree in which of the following? Enology, bioengineering, genetics, or geochemistry? The correct answer is geochemistry. This field involves the study of the chemical composition of the earth and its processes. It is directly related to environmental science as it deals with the impact of chemical processes on the environment, such as pollution, natural resource management, and environmental remediation. Why are the other ones incorrect? Enology is the study of wines and wine making. So that is not correct. Bioengineering applies engineering principles to biology and medicine, which can include environmental applications, but it is broader and not specifically focused on environmental science. So we can cross that out as well. Genetics is the study of genes and heredity, which is more focused on biological and medical applications rather than environmental sciences. So that is not correct. Geochemistry is indeed the correct answer here. Which type of approach should a researcher take if attempting to determine the effects of weathering on a region's largest lake? Scientific experiment, clinical research, scientific method, or observational study? The correct answer is observational study. This approach involves monitoring and recording conditions without manipulating the environment. For studying the effects of weathering on a region's largest lake, an observational study allows the researcher to gather data on natural processes and changes over time, providing insights into how weathering affects the lake. Why are the other answers incorrect? Scientific experiment. This involves manipulating variables in a controlled environment, which would be impractical in this case. Clinical research, this is used for medical studies on human subjects, so it's not relevant here at all. Scientific method, this is an overall process of scientific inquiry and not a specific type of study. So we can cross that out. Therefore, an observational study is indeed the most appropriate approach. I trust I was able to clarify the types of questions you will find on the Praxis 5005 Elementary Education Sciences exam. Please remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that with study.com's help, you will feel confident and prepared on exam day. Bye for now.